Hey guys, I'm back with another fun Halloween craft and today we're going to be making these pumpkin candy holders. Um, there's two different designs available when you download these um, and I would love to hear from you guys to know which style you prefer. So make sure to let me know in the comments and that way I know like what kind of styles to make more of or if you want to continue to see both, just let me know there. There's the design with the perforated back, um, which this is going to be great to use with wrapped candy. Um, or you have the one with the closing mechanism, um, which is great for unwrapped candy like M&M's or candy corn. And so to get started, um, first make sure that you go ahead and grab these free SVG files from my blog at svgnation.com. Um, there is a link in the video, video description that will take you there. And then once you upload these to Cricut Design Space, um, these are actually ready to go. I'm just going to add those to our canvas. Um, but this design is meant for the ornament. That's It's 3.15 inches, and that's a pretty standard size. Um, it's easy to find. If you are using a different size ornament, um, then you are going to need to resize these. And I'm just going to show you really quick how you would do that. Um, all you're going to do is take your shapes right here and select the circle right here and then go ahead and measure the opening um say the opening is two inches you'll just make this two inches or say it's 2.5 you can change the dimensions up here so it's 2.5 and then just place this on top of the design and click on your design and drag it so that the ornament just fits right inside of this opening um you want a really close fit um so you would just go like that and so it's really easy to resize for whatever size ornament you're using. So if you have a different size on hand at home already, then that's fine. Okay, but I'm actually going to start over because I'm not using that side. And I'm going to upload both of these to the canvas. Um, because if you are cutting multiple or making multiple ones of these at a time, it's best to go ahead and cut them together. Um, because if we click on make it, you're going to see that a lot of these elements are going to fit on a sheet of paper. Um, so you're just going to save a lot of paper by cutting multiple things together. Um, so they are ready to go. You can go ahead and cut them. Um, if you do want to make changes to any of the colors, um, then you can just go ahead and click on each layer first before cutting to do that. Um, but they're ready to go. So let's go ahead and click on make it. Um, when cutting the piece that is perforated, make sure that you are not using like an old or a dull cutting blade. Um, there are a lot of small intricate cuts for this one, so you do want to make sure that you are using a fine point or even the premium fine point blade. And also make sure that it's clean from any like glitter pieces um, if you cut glitter cardstock a lot. Um, this way you're not going to have any problems when cutting the design. And once all of your pieces are cut out, um, these are super easy to assemble. All you're going to need to do is start by gluing the two bottom pumpkin pieces together. And I'm using this Barely Art craft glue, um, which I just discovered, and I love using this for cardstock. Um, it's not going to leave any wrinkles or leave that wet looking appearance like other glues do. Um, so if you need a glue recommendation, you can find the link for this in the description. And then you're just going to fit the ornament where the circle cutout is on your pumpkin. And for gluing the ornament down, I actually like to use hot glue for this part um, because it dries really fast and it seals really well. Um, because, you know, when you push it down the glue, it kind of seals around it. Um, but if you are using hot glue, just keep in mind that you're going to have to work really fast because the glue gets cool quickly and is not going to stick then. And for the design with the perforated bottom, you are going to need to add the candy to the ornament before you glue it down. Um, so it's a little bit tricky um, getting it glued down, um, but just however you think it's easiest, you may want to glue the cardstock on top of the ornament while the ornament is sitting down or whatever works for you. Um, but once you've got it glued down, just go around and make sure that there's no open areas. And if there is, just add a little more glue to fill those in and go ahead and let that dry. And maybe, if, especially if you're using like a regular regular glue that takes a minute to dry, go ahead and press down on the ornament while it dries. Yeah. And then you're going to add the top piece of your pumpkin down. And I made mine with the glitter um, cardstock, so it's really pretty. Um, and it is kind of a tight fit to press this down. So you do have to press it down a little bit. Um, but the tight fit is going to help hide any of the glue mess from gluing the ornament down. Um, so don't worry about how perfect you glue that down. Um, and then once you've 
got the pumpkin down, just glue it down. You're not going to need a whole lot of glue um, because, like I said, it is a really tight fit. Um, and then you're just going to glue the little stem on, and your candy holder is ready to go. Um, so it really does not take that long at all to assemble. And these would be, like, really fun for Halloween treats for, like, the classroom. Um, kids really will enjoy ripping the back to get the candy out. Um, it's kind of fun. It just adds another exciting element to their Halloween treats. And for the pumpkin with the closing mechanism, you're going to assemble this pretty much the same way that you just assembled the other one. Um, except that you're going to be able to wait to add the candy until after the ornament is glued down. So it's a little bit easier getting that ornament glued down. And if you notice, these ornaments do have like this little hook piece on them. And you don't have to remove this because the top layer of the cardstock will cover it. Um, but if you want to, I was able to cut mine off with my Cricut scissors. Um, so it was pretty easy to do. Um, I definitely cannot make any promises that this is not going to mess up your scissors doing this. Um, so just keep that in mind. And if you are using unwrapped candy in your candy holder, um, just remember to wash the ornament before you assemble this. And also make sure that your glue is non-toxic um, because there may be a little bit that seeps into the inside of the ornament, um, but it's going to be dry. Um, so definitely make sure it's dry first before you add the candy. Um, so not a big deal. Um, but the closing mechanism for this um, candy holder, it's really easy to assemble. Um, before you glue it together, though, make sure to line it up on your candy holder as it would be, you know, once you have it done. That way you make sure you glue everything the right way um, because each side does need to be glued on a certain way. And this is going to work similar to like a spice container where you just turn the piece back and forth um, to like open and close it to uncover like the opening in it. And so to assemble it, you do want the round piece on the bottom, and then you're going to put the piece with the handle and arrow in the middle, and then the piece with the tabs on top. And you do want the area without the tabs to be on the side with the little pull-down arrow, because you are going to need this open area so you can pull the lever up and down. And then all you're going to do is glue the tabs over the middle piece to the other side of the circle. And Make sure that you use very little glue when doing this um, because you do not want any glue to seep um, and get into the middle um, where, where you've got to pull the handle down because then it's not going to move. And this middle piece is going to need to move freely inside um, these two round pieces. And so depending on your paper and your preference, you may want to duplicate the handle layer and glue the two pieces together to make it sturdier. I did try it both ways, um, which is the one layer and then with the two layers. And with the cardstock I'm using, I actually preferred it with just the one layer. Um, and I'm using a medium weight cardstock. Um, but you can try both ways and see what you prefer. Um, you may want it a little bit sturdier um, with the two layers, but I felt like it was a lot stiffer with turning it that way. But each paper is going to be a little bit different. And once the mechanism is assembled, um, you're just going to glue it to the back of the candy holder. Um, but make sure to line it up first because you do need to glue it in a specific spot. Um, you do want to make sure that it opens and closes over the cutout hole. And then when everything is dry, you can add your candy. Um, and the mechanism makes it really easy to get the candy in and out, um, which makes this such a fun design for unwrapped candies. Um, but you can also fit small wrapped candies in this design as well, um, but I really do feel like the other design works better for wrapped candies. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed these candy holders, and I've got a couple more Halloween designs that I'm working on that I'll be sharing with you guys soon, so make sure to subscribe so you do not miss out on those. And if you have any questions on how to assemble these, then go ahead and leave those in the comments and I will answer them there. And thanks so much for watching. Bye!